Assalamu alaikum. Lady Zainab's marriage. As Lady Zainab grew to an age suitable for marriage, many of men of nobility and great men of Arabia asked for her hand in marriage. And why wouldn't they? Who wouldn't wish for the hand of one of the only granddaughters of the Holy Prophet? Sadly, many of these men were not suitable, and they naively thought that due to their wealth, and high social position, they would be successful in marrying Zainab. An example of one of these men was the wretched Ash'ath ibn Qais al-Kindi, who was one of the wealthiest men and a close relative to the first usurper Abu Bakr. He was very dignified amongst the Arabs and thought his closeness to the first so-called caliph would make it possible for him to become the son-in-law of the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali, peace be upon him. It is said that one day he was in Imam Ali's house while he saw Zainab passing by from a distance. Then he asked Imam Ali if he could have her hand in marriage. But the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, refused and reproached him for his arrogance. Among the men who were eager to marry Zainab was Abdullah ibn Jafar. He was a close companion to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Amir al muminin Imam Ali, peace be upon him. Abdullah ibn Jafar was the son of... Jafar Tayyar, the martyr whom Prophet Muhammad had mentioned, that he flies in the heavens with his two wings. Jafar Tayyar was the brother of the commander of the faithful Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and was a forerunner in Islam and Jihad. His munificence and generosity had made him very famous among the Arabs, so much so that they called him the father of the poor. His son Abdullah ibn Jafar had inherited this attitude. All the historians refer to Abdullah ibn Jafar as a very gracious person. They have especially written about his generosity, courage and benevolence. According to the historians, he was the foremost generous people of his time, to the extent that some have called him the master of generosity. Abdullah ibn Jafar was a person whom Imam Ali, peace be upon him, had trust in. Later, he took a great part in the jihads along with Imam Ali, peace be upon him. In the Battle of Safin, he was one of the commanders of Imam Ali's army. Like other suitors, Abdullah ibn Jafar was interested in marrying Lady Zainab, but felt embarrassed to state his request directly. He sent a courier to Imam Ali and offered the proposal. Imam Ali, who saw him the best, accepted his request. But how much was the marriage portion? Imam Ali, peace be upon him, put Lady Zainab's dowry equal to her mother's. However, this auspicious wedding had one condition. Lady Zainab should be allowed to travel along with her brother Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. She should be allowed to visit her brother too. In fact, it rarely happened that they did not meet every day. Finally, this wedding took place and Lady Zainab went to her husband's house. Of course, the house of Abdullah ibn Jafar, who was a very wealthy man, was a big house with lots of servants. But history witnesses that Zainab never got attached to worldly life. She was a pious woman in the perfect sense. Piety, zuhd, in her vocabulary, was exactly what her father depicted 
Zuhud is that one owns the world, not that the world and its charms become the owner of the person. Evidence of Lady Zainab's piety was that she left her comfortable and prosperous life with servants and wealth for a divine and holy goal, just like a person who is aware of the future and its happenings. She put her condition for marriage that she should be allowed to travel with Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, to fulfill that goal. Like other women, she was very affectionate. However, whenever necessary, she was strong like a mountain in the path of Islam. Like other mothers, she was a kind and loving mother. But when it came to defending Islam and the noble Quran and her religious duty, she would sacrifice her children as well. Together, this young couple had five children, of whom four were sons, Ali, Aun, Muhammad and Abbas, and one daughter, Um Kulthum. <laughs>